think I've grown up really. I suppose it's like a childlike fascination that you start building more and more. You learn more, so therefore you're able to ask bigger questions. But the more questions that I ask, the more questions I can come up with. Something that I'm really interested in is you know, why can bats live for as long as they can when they shouldn't live for as long as they do? What enables them to be able to do that? How can a bat not get rabies when lots of other mammals do and die? They're simple questions. How can a bat see in the dark? Why does a bat hang upside down? Where do they come from? Who are their closest living relatives? How did flight arise in mammals? Why can't we fly? So these are the type of questions that I would be interested in. And it is the simple questions that are nearly the hardest to answer because they're quite complex. And something that you, you know, as a scientist, I guess you dedicate your life to try and answer these things. You, know, you never switch off. I think about it all the time. You know, three o'clock in the morning, breastfeeding my second child, you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it driving into work. Sometimes my best ideas come when the children are awake in the middle of the night and you're just thinking. So it's a mind that never switches off. It's a mind that's always interested, always fascinated by what's going on around you. And you kind of take a lot of inspiration from I said, reading a sentence in a book that will suddenly make you start to think in a slightly different way. So I guess maybe that's what a, the mind of a scientist is like. I do think you need some type of encouragement, people saying, keep your mind open, imagine, and then become the thing that you imagine if you want to be. And that's what I would tell a lot of our students, you know, if this is what you want to do, enjoy your life, do it.